everybody back? We're ready to go? Good. Um, I do just want to bring up, someone asked me during the break, they said, with all this stuff I'm telling you, it sounds like you're trying to make us counselors um, rather than wedding planners. And I want you to understand, you are counselors. You're a guide, if you will, for these people going through a major event in life. And you're the one who's going to be advising them on how to do that and make it a joyous occasion. So, yes, you're a counselor. Our greatest assets are also our greatest liabilities. To the client, your burden of pain, regardless of its source and cause, has made you into the strong, loving, and caring partner, parent, and friend that you are today. If mom was the burden, what mom did has made you into this wonderful person that you are today. This is a great question. Why are you getting married? Do we truly love one another? Are we truly the right person for one another? And the answer to that question includes two sub-questions. Do we like each other? Loving someone doesn't mean you're going to like them. Are we compatible to live together? Which of us will be giving up their job? What is expected of each of us after we're married? Don't go into this assuming that, you know, oh, we're, I'm going to maintain my career and then later find out that your husband is thinking you're going to be a housewife. Is either of us running from our real sexual identity? Those are my 10 questions that I feel are absolutely imperative to be addressed by the wedding couple before the wedding event. What can you do? If you have a real concern, it's probably a good idea to offer within your scope of services your ability to take responsibility for reviewing all of these things in advance. Are there any secret plans out there amongst uh, the wedding party or friends uh, that may end up being offensive or embarrassing? Medical school, graduate school, all these things are an enormous consumer of energy and time, then I would strongly recommend that they use a wedding planner and use the full menu of services so you, you are taking everything that you can off their plate. I would suggest that you as a uh, wedding planner consultant have a vendor list available for them of not only attorneys who deal or are willing to deal with same-sex couples, but who have expertise in dealing with the issues that are involved. More likely than not, your intuition is going to be right. And if you're wrong, your experience over time is going to sharpen that skill anyway. You can speed up that sharpening process by asking not only your clients, but also your vendors for feedback. And be receptive to that feedback. Ask for it, promote it, and be willing and able to respectfully and with dignity accept negative feedback. Ask them the following. Who will be most likely to make issues on the wedding day? What is the likely thing that they're going to do? If that who and that what comes up on the wedding day, this is how we're going to manage it. Once again clarify, look, there's no guarantee of perfection here and despite our best efforts to anticipate, plan for and divert these things from happening, they still may occur. If other people do notice, it's likely that they're going to say, well that's just the way Aunt Millie is. Guilt, anxiety and anger are universal emotions that we all experience. It's part of the the burden of humanity, if you will. They are, unfortunately, you could say those hidden daggers under every wedding veil. Significant re relationships are making a sudden shift. It, there's a big paradigm shift going on here. Reassure the individual, tell them, it's okay, don't worry about it, everyone goes through this, this is nothing unique. And encourage means, underscore the fact that they have the knowledge, facility, and resources to deal effectively with it without it upsetting or disrupting their, um, their joyous occasion. <laughs>